Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for designers, artists and creators. I'm Jacqueline and I'm an interior architect and designer here at DMB. In today's video I wanted to talk about the five interior design trends for summer 2020. That being said, let's jump into the video. Because the whole world has been locked down, we haven't really seen much in terms of construction and new interiors coming in to show. Therefore, I'm gonna be showing you my predictions for summer, but also things that I think will last the whole year. One trend that I've seen more and more of recently is the whole plant phenomenon. We have more house plants than ever before. I'm sure that over the past few months you've seen much more plants on Instagram and Pinterest. The trend is especially popular with millennials and raising plant babies is like the new norm. There are even house plant consultant jobs now that are becoming more and more in demand. According to experts, the rise in indoor plants and their accessories, as well as the rise of Instagram influencers, speaks to a growing trend amongst young people. With houseplants, you can be as crazy or as minimal as you like. A great way to do this is to fill out the corners of a room with plants instead of furniture. You could also fill out shelves with smaller plants like cacti or succulents, a great way to fill spaces up. I'm sure you've seen the hippie crochet hanging baskets from the 70s. Well, they're making a huge comeback. And personally, I think this adds a lot more dimension and intrigue to a dull or plain room. One story that just cracked me up was about a guy from the UK who has over 1,400 houseplants within his apartment. I just thought I'd share that with you, it made me laugh. But yeah, maybe you don't have to be that excessive with your plants, maybe just have one or two within a room. Houseplants are not only visually appealing, they also have many health benefits, such as reducing the amount of harmful toxins in a room, improving concentration, and reducing stress. What's great is that you can put it in any interior that has any sort of style and it will still look great. There's something so refreshing and pure when someone has a houseplant within their living room. It just adds something extra. Some of the top houseplants are the fiddle leaf fig, the snake plant, the Japanese palm, succulents, cacti, the Swiss cheese plant, the Chinese money plant, the yucca, and the classic fern. <laughs> So good luck with maintaining and keeping your house plants alive. The second trend that's really popular is the use of natural fabrics and colours within interiors. Rattan is the thin jointed stems of a palm used to create furniture. In fact, the material is so mainstream these days, it's even all over IKEA. But it's not just rattan that's popular, it's also materials like bamboo, terracotta, natural stone, Hessian and of course other woods. There's also an environmental factor here because these natural materials are more sustainable and cause less damage to the environment around them. As people become more and more aware of the harmful effects of plastic, we are witnessing a strong desire to choose materials that are easy to reuse, recycle and replenish. I think that this style creates a really organic and wholesome feel which in turn creates a pure and natural space to be in. I think that it's also really good for summer because these natural textures are often seen in beach villas and seaside properties, like these for example. Recently we designed a beach villa in Mauritius and used materials found on the island made by local craftsmen to create a feature chandelier piece. Let me know what you guys think of it. And of course with the natural look comes natural colours, but not like we're normally used to. Usually we are used to muted or cold neutral tones like these. I mean, the term magnolia or porcelain will forever be burned into our brains. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with this, but currently we're transitioning to a warmer colour palette by using caramel tones, peachy reds and muddy oranges, even bright splashes of yellow. Personally, I'm a huge fan of this because the colours are relevant all year round. In the spring, it evokes a fresh feeling. In the summer, it's used to evoke sunshine. In the autumn, the orange hues are brought out more. And in winter, it gives a sense of hygge or coziness into the home. So you can play around with the colour palette all year round, making it utilitarian and versatile. 
Perhaps you could even bring these colours into your interior just in a small way, like creating a painted arch to frame a bookcase. Or maybe even in a much bolder way, like creating a wall mural behind a bed. And if this idea is a bit wacky for you, then you could just bring in some subtle artwork to bring in those colours. These simple geometric prints are really popular these days. If you just go to Decenio, Society6 or even Etsy, there will be an array of prints for you to choose from. Let me know what you guys think of this design trend. Another trend that's really come to light in 2020 is Japandi. It combines Nordic chic with Eastern Zen. Japandi is essentially the combination of Japanese design and Scandinavian. And to be completely honest, there are many similarities between the two already. For example, the use of wood, colours that are inspired by nature, and a strong use of black throughout the whole of the interior. Now, although both the style's colours derive from nature, Scandinavian tends to go for much lighter tones, while Japanese depends to go for much more darker, earthier tones. Here are some examples of Japandi design. So how do you create a Japandi aesthetic within your space? Here are some design tips I have for you. First, choose your wall colour. If you're going for a darker wall, then you should pick out light furniture to balance it out. And contrastingly, if you pick a lighter wall, choose darker furniture. With anything, when designing in Japandi style, make sure everything is 50-50, so that you establish a strong balance between these two styles. For example, if you have a standy chair, make sure to balance that with a Japanese coffee table, and so on. Another tip is to add grey accents to a space, whether that's through furniture, pottery, or artwork. Grey is a colour that ties into both styles, making it a great unifying colour. Choose a black statement lamp or ceiling light. This will bring a certain mood to the space. Make sure that the lamp is also simple in style and made of metal. A small tip is to also add subtle oriental features, whether it's through the use of houseplants, lighting, or even decor. This will automatically create a Japanese feeling within your interior and pay homage to Japanese design. Now, I've been talking mainly about a living room scenario, but if you were designing a bathroom, use square tiles like this, as they are extremely common in Japan. And obviously, tie in other Japanese features as well as Scandi decor. Incorporating matte black handles and faucets is also a great way to bring in those darker elements. And if you're going for a much more bolder look, I suggest using concrete for the bathroom. The darker the concrete, the more drama you will create. The main element of Japandi style to remember is to play with dark and light. Where there's dark in a space, there should also be light elements. Now, I hope that made the Japandi trend clear to you. Now, another thing we're seeing more and more of is drinking. Yes, you heard me correctly, drinking. Lockdown has subsequently led to more alcohol intake which has led to the return of bar carts and drinks trolleys, which if you ask me, I'm thrilled about. The drinks trolley came into full function in the 1950s, where home entertaining became popular, classy. The rise of cocktail parties and having friends over for drinks allowed people to make drinks in the comfort of their own home. A bar cart was either stationed in the living room or rolled out with snacks to serve. Although in those days, it was more of a practical, functional, drinks trolley. These days they're just used as a more of a design feature than anything else. Having one can instantly impress your guests, especially if you're going to be creating a cocktail right in front of their eyes. But what sort of design styles actually are there? There's the industrial look, which is lots of metal and wood. The art deco style, which uses brass and glass as the main features. The hidden drinks cabinet, and if you don't want to let on how much you're actually boozing up on a Friday night. Um, you've got the classic and my favourite, the mid-century wooden drinks cabinet. So let me know what style is your favourite. 
I don't know, I just think there's something classy about having a drinks trolley in your entertainment space. After all, all those pretty gin bottles and glassware deserve to be shown off and you also have more room to tuck away more unattractive items. The last trend for summer, which is not really a trend but I just thought it was so fun, I thought I'd add it to my list and that trend is garden festivals. I don't know about you, but I was watching the Glastonbury highlights on TV this year thinking, oh, this is so sad, there's no festivals this year. But nonetheless, that hasn't stopped people converting their back gardens into fun, vibrant festivals. You must have seen the family that converted their whole garden into a Glastonbury festival. How amazing is that? I think it's a great way to boost the mood of, well, the whole world and creates a sense of joy back into our lives. And the design elements for creating one are so easy. So if you're thinking about creating your own garden festival, you'll need these things. Colourful things to hang, like bunting, streamers or flags. A stage space or just speakers scattered around the garden. Great lighting to set the vibe. And I suggest festoon lighting, or even a thin LED wire that you can wrap around trees. Of course you need an outdoor bar for easy access to drinks. And if you're feeling really extra, you could even put up a tent or gazebo to create that tent-like atmosphere. Like I said, it was on my list because I just thought it was such a fun idea for you to do and the whole family to enjoy over the summer period. But nonetheless, it is still a super hot trend at the moment. So those are my top interior design trends for summer 2020. And if you think I missed anything out, then leave a comment below to let me know what you think is popular at the moment. If you're new to this channel then welcome, this channel is all about interior design, architecture, illustration, art and graphic. So if any of that interests you, make sure to subscribe to see videos just like this one. And if you like this video then please give it a big thumbs up because by doing that you really do support our channel. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!